Now question 2a is asking us to calculate the pH of a solution which is 0.4 mol per dm cube with respect to ethanoic acid, 0.2 mol per dm cube with respect to sodium ethanoate. Again now what we have is ethanoic acid and ethanoate. So I have a weak acid and conjugate base added together. There's no need for me to consider I stable. This is already a buffer solution. If it is a buffer, I can determine the pH of this buffer solution. The Ka value is given, the concentration for your acid and the conjugate base is given. I think we should be able to determine this quite easily. I just use pH equals to pKa plus log salt over acid. Acid very nicely will be ethanoic acid. The conjugate base is CH3CO- which also happens to be an ionic compound. This is a salt. So for simple buffing systems like this, usually no problem. But don't have this impression thinking that all the buffers will look as simple as this. So my suggestion is always focus on the denominator. The acid will not give me any problem. Acid is at the bottom. The conjugate base will be the numerator. Then I just substitute. K value is 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 5. The ratio for your conjugate base to acid, 0.2 divided by 0.4. I'll get the pH equals to 4.44. So part A is easy. Since this is a buffer, I can use the buffer equation. I can determine the pH of this buffer solution. So this one, no problem. B is interesting because involving B, we want to determine the pH or the change in pH when you're adding 0.05 mole of sodium hydroxide to a buffer. Now, this is where some of us will be a bit confused. Huh? If let's say this is a buffer, then of course I can calculate the pH of the buffer solution. When I add sodium hydroxide to a buffer, actually, how do I determine the pH when you have a base added to buffer. We did reactions where a base add to acid. I can determine the resultant solution using the ice table. But what if I'm adding sodium hydroxide to a buffer? How do we handle that? Now, if you are thinking of adding sodium hydroxide to a buffer, what is the reaction between sodium hydroxide and a buffer? Actually, the concept we have to, again, uh, go down uh, one level deeper. We have to understand, actually, a buffer is a mixture of two things. All right, so let's start with this. A buffer is a mixture of two things, right? I have an acid, I have a base. Now, each of these components has only one drop. So therefore, when you're adding OH-, minus, you have to ask yourself which of this component that is inside this buffer is responsible for trying to remove your OH-. Minus. I know that a buffer is supposed to maintain pH. When you add H+, plus, then somebody inside the buffer will try to remove a H+. Plus. When you're adding OH-, minus, one of the component inside this buffer, we try to remove the OH minus. And for this buffering system, I know that buffer must have an acid and base. The acid will be ethanoic acid. The base will be ethanoic. When you add sodium hydroxide, who is the one that is responsible for trying to remove the OH minus? I know that the buffer will try to remove this OH minus because it tries to maintain pH. It is the responsibility for the acid to remove OH minus. It's not the job of the base to try to remove your hydroxide. So if I'm sodium ethanoate, nah, if I'm ethanoate, if you add in OH minus, that's not my problem, right? Because my responsibility as a base is to remove H plus. If H plus comes in, then I'll do something about it. If OH minus comes in, it's not my job, you know? It's the job of the acid. The acid will settle the OH minus. It's not my problem as your base. So don't think of a reaction between sodium hydroxide and buffer. Because buffer, there are two things, acid plus base. And acid and base, each one of them has only one job. So what we have to do is we have to decide when you put in an OH minus, which of these components will respond to the OH minus. And then we are closer to the truth, correct? Closer to the idea. So what we do is we know that this is the reaction. Your acid will react with hydroxide to form the conjugate base and water. So if this were an uh, explanation question, if I ask you, oh, can you show me how the buffer maintains pH when we add small amount of OH minus. Then what we will do is we will recognize that, okay, this acid will remove OH minus. Right now this equation, and then we say that OH minus is removed and therefore pH is maintained. All right, if that's the explanation question. Of course, what we have to do here, since this is calculation, we have to show what is the resultant solution. And based on the resultant solution, I want to determine the pH of that resultant solution, whether it is a buffer or something else. And in this case, uh, how do I determine the resultant solution? Same thing, ice table. We still use the ice table to determine the resultant solution. Now, what is different from this hydroxide added to buffer? 
versus hydroxide reacting with a uh, weak acid. The difference is this value that I've highlighted in blue here. Please remember you're adding sodium hydroxide to a buffer. It is true that this OH- will be reacting with your weak acid, but the difference between what we do usually uh, between a strong base weak acid reaction and OH- added to a buffer is at the beginning, I already have a certain concentration of your conjugate base. So this is not a zero value since this is a buffer, which I think some of us might out of habit, we might miss out because usually when we do reactions involving uh, stoichiometry, uh, usually we only have the reactant, we don't have products. So if you try to fill up ice table, some of us might out of habit in terms of the amount of the product initial, you just write down at the beginning, no product, zero, zero. We will have the tendency to do that. But please remember for a buffer, at the beginning, I already have some weak acid, some conjugate base. At the beginning of the reaction, I already have 0.2 mole per dm cube of your CH3 CO minus. And I have to reflect that in. If you put this as zero, then what you're doing is you're doing a reaction between a strong base and a weak acid. It, it will not be a reaction between a strong base and buffer. So do take note of that. And once you take note of this at the beginning, this concentration of your acid or rather your conjugate base is 0.2, then the rest of it is the same. Sodium hydroxide is limiting, 100% of it will be used up. So add these two together, you end up with 0.35 mole per dm cube of your weak acid. No sodium hydroxide huh? because this is limiting. 0.25 mole per dm cube of your conjugate base. So I still have a mixture of your conjugate acid base pair. This is a, still a buffer. If it is still a buffer, of course, I can use the buffer equation to determine the pH of this buffer solution. All right? So substituting, substituting these values in, it's just a slight change in terms of the concentration of your acid and your conjugate base. I can determine the pH to be 4.6. So therefore, the change in the pH, we can show uh, from 4.44 to 4.60, the increase in the pH is plus 0.16. It's a very small change. And in general, most of the questions that we encounter for buffer, if I do calculation question, at the beginning, this is a buffer. You add small amounts of H plus or OH minus. Usually this is limiting. The resultant solution, you can fill up using the ice table. You can determine that the resultant solution, it is a buffer. And if the resultant solution is a buffer, I can still use the buffer equation to find the pH of this buffer solution. And usually we will be able to show that the change in the pH is very small usually is about 0. Point something unit. So it shows that the buffer functions reasonably well in terms of maintaining pH.